Hi, I'm Steve Podraczyk for Seattle Avionics. Today we're going to talk about our new PC and Mac based system, web based system, called FlyQ Online. It previously was called by its code name Atlas, so it's the same thing. So instead of calling it Atlas, it is now a member of the FlyQ family, so just FlyQ Online. So let's talk about it. I'm sitting in front of my Mac right now. You could just as easily be using a PC. The point is to allow you to very easily plan a flight, check the weather, get fuel prices, get very detailed airport information, all of that from the comfort of your desk or from a laptop. The product is still in beta. There are a couple of things that don't work. So one of the things that I recommend that you do before you do much of anything is to go to the far right hand side, click on the question mark icon, and there's some information which is constantly updated telling you what doesn't work and gives you some operational differences uh, between FlyQ Online and FlyQ EFB on your iPad. Okay, so again, you just hit the question mark first. All right, so let's begin. When you start the product, it immediately will lock on, if your web browser supports it, to an area roughly near you to show you the nearby airports. You can also look at a national map. You can move the map around with your mouse. It's very fast. If you want the map to zoom into your current location, similar to FlyQ EFB, there's an icon that looks like kind of a targeting site uh, on the upper left side near the search box. Click on that, and it zooms the map and shows you the airports in the area that are near there. So right now I'm in the Seattle area. I can move this around. It's very, very fast. I can, in the lower right corner, there's a plus button and a minus button to change the zoom. So I can zoom out a little bit. If you like, of course, you can change the map. This is the layers dropdown, very similar again to the one in FlyQ EFB. So you can make that an IFR low map if you like. Maybe let's zoom in a little just so you can see how clear that is. You can make that photographic quality. Let's zoom in a lot further on this one. So you can see a photographic map. You can take a look at road maps and so on. You can look at a terrain map. All of that are kind of your base maps. I'll go back to a sectional though for the time being or maybe an IFR low. This is in real time, by the way. You see how very, very fast the system is. I'm simply doing this, uh, to be honest, I'm doing this recording from home right now. So this is simply your basic home internet connection, nothing blindingly fast. I can look at a flight plan line. Fuel prices don't work quite yet. TFRs don't work in the beta. I can look at my radar image though. So let's back up the map a little. So I can look at radar. I can overlay satellite imagery. I can take a look at my surface winds, air mets and sigmets. Oop, air mets and sigmets aren't on yet. Surface temperatures, dew point, and so on. So a lot of different area, a lot of different things that you can turn on. All right, so let's hit the button that looks like the targeting site again, just to get back to a nice normal location. I'll turn off all these other layers like the dew points and so on. Now let's get into what it's like to plan a flight. So. We looked at the weather map a moment ago, and it's pretty clear that the weather is bad in the Midwest, but let's say for whatever reason, maybe I was flying there in a couple of days, but I want to plan the flight there now. So let's say I want to plan a flight from the Chicago area to Peoria, Illinois. Now, I don't really know the area very well, so I'm just going to type in Chicago. No, not that. Chicago in the search box and it gives me a list of all the airports in the area. All of the icons here that are blue are controlled airports. This is very similar to FlyQ EFB or to FlyQ Pocket. So we show you what the runways actually look like. We give you a colored indicator for what the weather is like. And if it's a blue airport, that means it has a control tower. If it's a magenta airport, like Skydive Chicago and Lansing, you know that you don't have a control tower. You also see, let's go back to maybe Chicago O'Hare. You know uh, what city it's in, the maximum runway length, the TPA, the tower, the ATIS, and the ground frequencies are all there for you. Fuel prices are there for you. Again, similar to FlyQ EFB, you can hit a, a button to jump the map immediately to that point. In fact, let's do that. You can look at the weather information um, at that airport. You can see fuel prices near that airport, not necessarily at that airport, by the way. Or you can add it to your flight plan. By the way, the plus FP button in the beta doesn't work quite yet. Let's get rid of that box. All right, what I want to do though is to find an airport in the area which I may want to take off from. So I'm going to move this to a section, I'll look around, and I'll see what would be a good airport for me to take off from. 
All right, this one looks good. So I, I really don't want to fly in the class B area. So this airport right here, Waukegan Regional, UGN, that looks like a good airport for me to take off from. So let's say I want to know a little bit of information about that airport though. I can simply click on it. Here's again the same information about the airport. I can click there and now I see my, I see a, a satellite image, I see the FAA diagram, and I even see the diagram here uh, that has all the, where the, all the FBOs are. I see my common, my runway frequencies, my nav aids. If I want to look up the weather at this airport, I just click on the weather sub tab. I know it's currently 25 degrees. I see my local, my regional, and my national radar. Like on Fly QEFB, I can click on one of them, say on the regional one, and see that larger. I see my weather reports, both METARs and TAFs. Notice I get a METAR from this airport, but this airport doesn't have its own TAFs, which isn't uncommon. So the TAF is coming from the nearest nearby airport that has a TAF. I see both my raw and gray, my translated in white, all on one screen. My winds aloft are right here, very easy to do. I'm going to take off from this airport, so I don't care about the procedures. But if I did, I could show that. Just pull up a procedure, as easy as that. Scroll it up, zoom it around, whatever. Uh, it is interesting though, it immediately tells me there's one NOTAM, so I probably do want to read that. Alright, so let's see. Looks like the ILS is out. Okay, fine. I can take a look at the AFD, and so on. Maybe even look at airport services. So in addition to the FBOs and the fuel prices, I know where, the, uh, where I can stay lodging-wise, what the restaurants are, and what the attractions are in the area. All right, so I know a lot about that airport, but I don't want to do that right now. I want to plan a flight. So it's UGN. Now, I can do that a couple ways. I can go to my plans tab, and I can type in, say, UGN here. I can type in my to and my from, take off my uh, takeoff dates and so on, select the routing to whatever I like. I prefer to go on Victor Airways. If I flew something a bit bigger than the Piper, I could take Jet Airways. I can do train avoidance, wind optimization. Incidentally, unlike in Fly QEFB, I can also have the system, I'll just highlight this, add fuel stops as well. And so with that checkbox on, if I take a longer flight, the system will automatically insert all my fuel stops for me. I can automatically optimize it for the best winds. If I want even more options than this, I can hit show all options, just a little checkbox here. And I can pick uh, the pilot, the aircraft, I can pick uh, things like the number on board, I can set a maximum altitude, normally the service ceiling of your aircraft, but maybe you want to be a little lower so you never need oxygen. If you're flying uh, on terrain avoidance, you can give it a minimum altitude in terms of AGL. Uh, that means, of course, that you won't be any closer than 1,000 feet to the ground at any one point. If you're flying a jet or high-performance craft, you can make sure that no matter what the wind optimizer thinks, that you never have a minimum cruise altitude below, say, let's say this were a jet, below 22,000 feet, whatever it may be and so on. So a lot of options there. Now that's kind of, in, honesty, in all honesty though, that's kind of a long way to plan the flight. Most of the time when I plan a flight, I simply type it into the search box. So I'm just going to type in, I'll go to the search box here, type in UGN, oh, see so I've already done this. I'm typing in PIA, which is Peoria, and the V. The V, what the V means is plan this whole flight on Victor Airways. So I'm going to hit the enter key on my keyboard, the system is now telling me that it's creating the flight plan. This will just take a couple of seconds to create the flight. All right, and here's our flight plan. So this is our nav log. We immediately see things like all the basics to the flight are on the top. So the takeoff time, the aircraft I'm flying, the total distance, the total duration. I know I'm, I set this as VFR. I can make it IFR like that if I wanted to. You can set your, air, your pilot name if you have multiple pilots, and so on. The meat, though, to, the, to this is the nav log. So right now, if you look uh, under the plans tab, there's a sub tab as new, which is what we were looking at before to create a new flight plan. Recent shows you all the list of recent flight plans. I'll just click on that so you see what I mean by that. So these are flights that I planned, including the one I just planned a moment ago. I can go back to my nav log, and notice that the weather briefing and FAA flight plan are also there. So without doing anything else, if I click on WX Brief, it has already gotten from either Lockheed Martin or from Duots the weather briefing. Very clear, very, very easy to read. 
If I wanted to file my flight plan, I just hit FAA plan and I can file it. Let's just go ahead and do that. There you go. It's already filed. Easy. But let's go back to our navlog. Let's say we really didn't want to file it quite yet. We wanted to modify the flight plan a little. The first thing I want to do is, since I was looking at an approach procedure here, let's hit the map button and we'll jump to the map right here. So that's our entire flight plan on here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Let's see what the weather's like. Let's turn our radar layer back on. All right, pretty crummy. In real life, I probably wouldn't want to fly this, but you know, there it is. Let's say that I want to stay in the green, not in the blue. So let's modify the flight plan by rubber banding a little. I'm going to zoom in. And let's see, where would be a good area to zoom into? Maybe, all right. So this point right here, uh, start, let's say I don't want to fly in the blue. I can simply take my mouse, pick it up, drag it, maybe bring it to uh, where would be a good thing. Looks like there's an airport right over here. So we'll move it to that. This is Morris Muni. So I'll click on that and take a look at the nav log on the left hand side. So start just got replaced with KC09. All right, so we've now rubber banded the flight plan. You can do that a little bit more too. Let's, sorry, let's zoom in again a little. One other way to rubber band a flight plan, tell you what, I'm gonna actually turn off the radar just to make it more clear. And I believe we said it's an IFR flight. So let's flip this back to IFR mode. Notice how quick this is, by the way, I'm not editing this. I mean, it's very, very fast. So if I want to move this a little, I can instead of flying to uh, the Bradford BFD VOR, if I wanted to, well, now let's leave that there. Let's say that I wanted to put in some odd dog leg. For whatever reason, I want to put in a leg between this point Ahmed and this point BFD. I wanted to put in a point here to Ynet. Well, the way that this system works, this is using a system called Google Maps to do the underlying mapping system. So between any two lines, any two legs, there's kind of a phantom point in the middle, which is what I just dragged. So you can't drag anywhere on the line. You have to pick the middle point. But I can drag that. Let's put that on here. Looks like it's on Ynet. Click on that. Again, you watch the nav log on the left-hand side will update itself. There you go. There's Ynet and so on. All right, so we've now modified our flight plan by dragging and dropping. You also can find some, a few other things. Like, let's say that I'm not very familiar with KC09, but maybe I was thinking, maybe I want to put fuel there. I know, in real life, it's a little silly to put in fuel that quickly, but just humor me for a demo. So I can click on this, and I can see information about this airport. I can jump the map to it. I can add a point above it, or I can add a point to the end of the flight plan, or, of course, delete it. Now, I don't know anything about this airport, so I'm going to click on Info. It tells me a bit about it. I can see the weather, procedures, notams, all that kind of thing. But I'm going to use another feature of the product now. I just want to find cheap fuel in that area. Well, there's a big weather tab on the top. When you hit the weather tab, it finds all the fuel near whatever point you last selected. In this case, it's an airport. So when I click on fuel, it looks like this is the lowest, I'm right now looking at 100 low lead, and I'm sorting it by lowest price. Let's sort it by distance. So I'm finding the airport that has fuel closest to the airport we're currently on, KC09. So, so it looks like C09 does in fact have fuel. It's, I'm just highlighting it now, $4.50. All right, let's see if we can do any better than that. So I'm going to flip this to lowest price. It resorts a list in a second or two. It looks like I can get it as low as $3.89. Hey, that's pretty good. That's a nice savings. The problem is, this is at Kentland Municipal Airport, and it's 60 miles away. So if that were really where I wanted to fly, flying 60 miles out, out of my way to save 70 cents in gas probably doesn't make sense. All right. But so we're not going to change the fuel stop. We're going to keep it where we are. So the way that we get back to our plan is we hit the plans tab. It remembers exactly where we were. It looks like we were looking at this. Oh, one thing though, we didn't actually add fuel. So KCON, if you take a look at the fuel column here, uh, when we took off, it says 48 gallons on plus fuel. So that's where we took off, we added 48 gallons. In KCO09, there's a zero next to the added fuel. Well, first thing though, is if you take a look at KCO09, there's a type column. This is a takeoff. If you take a look at PIA down the bottom, it's landing. 
All the other ones in the middle are waypoints. Waypoints mean that you're flying over them. Well, if they want to add fuel, since we don't have aerial refueling capability in my Piper, you probably need to land. Well, you can set this to a stop. A stop means a fuel stop, or it's a little bit of a shortcut. So if I click to add fuel, like I'm going to click on the zero zero and add fuel, um, it will automatically create a fuel stop. Now, notice though, it's not asking me how much fuel I want to put in. Instead, it defaults to a choice that says fill to takeoff level. So let's say that I began the flight for whatever reason at maybe 50 gallons or something like that, uh, or 50% rather. When I tell it that I want to take off, uh, set it to the takeoff level, it will put in the amount to get me back to half tank. Or I could tell it to top off the tanks. Or if I really want to, I could say, no, I really mean it, add in 10 gallons of fuel. Okay. What's cool about the fill the tanks or the top off the tanks feature is if you modify the flight plan a little bit later, the system will automatically rebalance the tanks. So you don't have to worry about keeping, uh, you don't have to keep doing math to figure out how much fuel you need. The computer will take care of it for you. So I'm going to tell it I want to fill it to take off level like this. It will just load in, recalculate the flight plan for me. By the way, if you want to see your entire flight plan, the button here on top that says map and print and so on, if I click map, it shows me my whole flight, which is kind of handy. So notice, since I put in fuel, it now says 7.8 gallons. And again, I didn't do the math on that. It calculated that for me, which is very handy. Something else I may want to do. Let's say that um, the system set the altitude, wind optimizing it at 8,000 feet. But let's say that for whatever reason, I want to fly after KC-09 at maybe 4,000 feet. Maybe there's some scenery I want to see or something like that. So if I click on that 8,000 feet, I can type in my new altitude here. But then there's a choice. Do you change the altitude for only this waypoint or this one and all the later ones? Which is actually what I want to do. I don't want to type in 4,000 four times. I just want to type it in once and have the system replicate it down, uh, kind of like you would in maybe an Excel spreadsheet. You can also tell it to modify uh, all the points in your flight plan, including the ones before this to 4,000 feet. I'm going to pick that middle choice, this one and the later feet. I just click OK. And now the flight plan again gets reloaded and recalculated. Oh, I typed in 400. I probably don't want to fly 400 feet. So let's say 4,000 feet rather. And there we go. So we're flying at the beginning of the flight at 8,000 feet, the second part of the flight at 4,000, and so on. Now, if I want to get this printed out so I can take this in the plane, that's probably a really good idea to do. I can hit the print button. It actually generates a PDF file, and here's my PDF. Okay. So I see this very clear, very easy to follow PDF file, color-coded, uh, nice icons telling me what kind of airport they are, a lot of information, and so on. This is specifically designed to be printed, so when you uh, print this out, you get a uh, half-page print. You can cut the paper in half and put it on your knee board. You close that window, and we're back to our flight plan. Okay. If I want to change the takeoff time, I just click there. Let's say I want to do this flight tomorrow instead of today. Okay. Again, it will reload it, and it will recalculate the winds that are predicted to be at that time. By the way, I can scroll this over to see the additional information. Um, if I really want to. Let's maybe make that a little different time. So let's maybe make that at, uh, let's say, 3.30 or so in the afternoon. We'll say OK. All right. So you see what the winds are like, the ground speed, magnetic heading, and so on. If I want to rename the flight, or actually, i tell you what. I can make this wider. If I want to see all of that information, you don't have to scroll the nav log. You can just uh, resize the window by grabbing on it. If I want to rename this flight, I just click on it. Like I'm going to call this now Monday flight. Click OK. All right. Now the system, by the way, is live the whole time. You're not sitting there waiting. There's no like uh, thing saying, well, you can't do anything else while you're uh, while the system's loading. So I can move the map around, look at it, check the weather whatever I like to do. Okay. Other things that you can do with the system. Let's again talk about uh, the weather. So let's go to weather. In the weather system, we very similar to FlyQ EFB and FlyQ Pocket. We have Canadian weather and US weather. When you click on this, this is what we kind of call the weather gallery. 
So I can click on, say, my freezing levels. And let's say you can even resize that, you know, whatever, however big you want that window to be. So if I click on my current freezing levels, you see the details on the right. If I want to jump to the three hour forecast, I click on that. If I wanted to jump to the 12 hour forecast, click on that. Very, very fast, very easy to do. You can also select nearby weather, which will show you all of the five closest METARs, the five closest TAFs, and so on to where you are. So, as you can see, it's very, very quick, very easy to plan a flight, to modify a flight, to file the flight plan, to get the weather briefing, and so on. Super simple, super easy to do. This is new FlyQ Online from Seattle Avionics. And again, it's a member of the FlyQ family. So all the flight plans, aircraft profiles, and pilot profiles are shared automatically between your Mac and your PC using FlyQ Online, and on your iPhone or Android with FlyQ Pocket, and on your iPad using FlyQ EFB. For Seattle Avionics, I'm Steve Podrachik. Have a great night. Thank you.